3.3, systems of equations, we're going to learn about what's called augmented matrices today. So we're going to be taking sets of linear equations like we were just talking about in section 6162, and we're going to be putting them into a matrix, which is where we just take the numbers and not the variables. So we're saving time on writing down things. And we know what variable they, the numbers go with based on where they are in the matrix. So we're going to make the first column one variable, the second column another variable, the third column another variable. So then we know when we're done that the numbers in those columns go with those variables. But it just shortens down the amount of writing. And it also allows like a computer or a calculator to calculate the stuff for us. But that's not what we're learning today. Today's stuff is like little puzzles. We're doing them all by hand just to give us a hang of how we can use matrices to do elimination method. So it's really, six theory is really just learning how to use matrices to do what you did in section 6.2 or what you will do in section 6.2. All right. <clears throat> So a matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers. It can be used to represent the numbers for many different things, like in a spreadsheet. In this chapter, we will use matrices to represent systems of equations, but we will just include the coefficients and the constants. Now, this is called upper triangular form, because see how it's kind of a triangle shape, with the top of the triangle being the larger part and the point of the triangle being at the bottom. So that's why it's called upper triangular form. <clears throat> and notice the reason it looks kind of like a triangle is that the bottom equation just has one variable, the middle equation has two variables, and then the top one has three. So that's why that has that name. And the thing that's really nice about upper triangular form is that you have one of your variables and you can just plug it in. Like you can plug the negative one in here for Z to find Y. And then you can plug Y and Z in to find X. So it just falls apart with the substitution method when you've got it in this triangular form. Okay, let's look at, do I have an example? Well, I have this example. I guess I just explained through this, but we can actually write this out if you want. So we can plug this in here. This isn't letting me write. It's being picky. So I'm going to plug that in there. So then I would have y minus 2 times negative 1 equals 4. So that would be y plus 2 equals 4, which would tell us that y equals 2. Right? I'm going to take that and move that over here. So now that we have y equals 2, I can plug that in here. And I can still plug my z value in here. So then that would give me x minus 3 times 2 plus 2 times negative 1 equals 1. So I would have x minus 6 minus 2 equals 1, so that's x minus 8. Add the 8 to both sides, and x equals 9. So I have my solution to the system of equations as 9 for the x value, 2 for the y value, and negative 1 for the z value, and that is one set of solutions for the three variables. So see how upper triangular form is kind of cool because it makes it really easy to plug in and find everything. Once we have one answer, we can use it to find everything else. Okay, we just talked about what a, what a matrix is. So we can take any system of equations and put it into a matrix. So we're going to make sure all of our equations are written with the terms with variables on the left in alphabetical order usually, and then the constants on the right side of the equal sign. We take the coefficients for each term and write them in the matrix. Each, each equation is a row in the matrix and each variable is a column. And if there's no number there, like there's a variable missing like here, then we put a zero in place of where there's no z. Or if there's no number in front of the variables, then those are ones, or if it's a negative, it's a negative one, correct? 
so write these augmented matrices out with me really fast. To write a matrix, I would start with a bracket that's going to contain my three rows. So the coefficient next to x in the first row is a 3. So I don't write the x, I just write the 3. And then the next number is a negative 1. The next number is a positive 1. And the last number is a 3, but I need something to differentiate where that equal sign is, so I usually put just some dashed lines here, which is why this is called an augmented matrix, because it's augmented with the constants at the end. Because this could be written as two separate matrices, and instead it's put all together in one matrix called augmented instead. So then we take these coefficients, 2, negative 4, 3, 16, and then these coefficients, 1, negative 1, 1, 5, and that's our augmented matrix. We haven't done anything with it other than make the matrix out of the system. That's the first step. So see if you can do the second one on your own. All right, so let's check your answers together. Remember, first column x, second column y, third column z, fourth column is the constants. So next to our x, we have a negative, so that's a negative 1. And we have a negative 2, and then we have just z, so we're going to have a 1 there. And then over here, we have a negative 1. Then for my second equation, I have an x value, so there's my 2, and I have a y value, which is 3, but there's no z. So I have to put something there, so I'll just put it in a zero to hold that place. Then in my third equation, there's no x, so I put a zero in for x, a one for y, a negative two for the z, and a zero for the constant. Save.